test and what do you test for? I'm in the latent print unit, so we process uh, evidence for fingerprints and compare uh, latent prints to known finger impressions. And how long have you been so employed? I've been with the state police for uh, close to 29 years, <clears throat> excuse me, and 25 in the crime laboratory. With regard to evidence and um, reviewing them for latent prints, uh, were you called upon specifically uh, by the West Bloomfield Township Police Department uh, to review some evidence that was presented to the Michigan State Police Crime Lab? Yes. And specifically as it relates to, and I know that there are laboratory numbers associated with the items that you're called upon to test, but specifically um, I'm talking about a uh, clear plastic bag that was submitted uh, by the West Bloomfield Township Police Department. Yes. Okay. Were, did you have an opportunity to uh, assess that item and um, make a determination about whether or not you could, uh, whether latent prints were revealed on that item? Yes. Were they of comparison value? I processed the evidence for latent prints and developed uh, latent fingerprints on the item, yes. Thank you. Now, at that point, did you have any known prints for purposes of comparison? Yes, I compared the unknown latent prints with known finger impressions. And the known finger impressions, were those uh, memorialized in your report? Yes. Do you recall the names of the persons identified with those known fingerprints at this time without referring to your report? Um, I believe they were, um, I would have to refer, I don't want to miss, misspoke. Certainly. Um, let me do this. If I may approach, Your Honor. Sure. Thank you. I'm showing you what's been marked as People's Proposed Exhibit Number 9. I'd ask you to take a look at that and tell me if you recognize that. Yes. And what is that? This is a copy of my report that I generated after I processed the evidence. Okay. And with regard to the known prints that you were provided, who did those known fingerprints belong to? Um, to Deshaun Smith, Jalen String Stringer, and Diana Purcell. Pesserl? Pesserl. Okay, excuse okay. me. Okay, that's yes. okay. So what do you do when you uh, process the evidence and uh, reveal latent prints? Once I process evidence and develop latent prints, I then uh, can compare them to known fingerprints or a fingerprint card. Did you do that in this particular situation? Yes, I did. And were you able to make a determination as to any of the latent prints that were revealed on the bag uh, whether or not they matched any of the known prints that you were provided? Yes, there were four identifications made in this case. Okay. And what identifications were you able to make? Four latent fingerprints were compared to the known finger impressions bearing the name of Jalen Stringer and identified to that fingerprint card bearing that name. Okay. So based upon your analysis and your comparison, and your ability to take into account the known <coughs> fingerprints as well as the latent prints from the bag, you were able to assess that there is the fingerprints on the bag belong to Jalen Stringer? Yes. Does that report, is that an accurate reflection of the report that you authored? Any changes to it? Any differences from when you authored it? No, this is an accurate report. Your Honor, at this time, people move to admit People's Proposed Exhibit Number 9. No objection. No objection, Your Honor. That's just a no objection. Right, just Thank you. Your Honor, I have no further questions. May I retrieve the, the exhibit? Do you need okay. it? Uh, go ahead. Thank you. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. yes. Ma'am, can you state your name again for the record? Karen Dutcher. And you are employed where? I'm employed with the State of Michigan Department of State Police, currently in the Forensic Laboratory in Sterling Heights in the latent print unit. So there is a latent print unit with the State of Police, correct? Yes. Okay. And you've been working in that capacity for well over 20 years? Yes. Okay. So you're an expert, to say the least. Yes. Okay. Now, at some point you received information involving the investigation of, um, and the charges set forth in the complaint involving Mr. Smith and Mr. Stringer, correct? Yes. And who submitted this information or the request to you to have certain items tested for prints? That was the West Bloomfield Township Police. Was in the, the, was in the Oakland County Sheriff's Department? No, we, uh, the evidence was submitted by the police department. By the police department? Yes. Okay. And that mm -hmm. evidence that you received, when did you receive it? 
If I may refer to my report to refresh Please, my memory. Thank you. There were three sets of uh, reports that I generated. The first date being um, December 9th, December 14th of 2016, and then uh, January 11th, 2017 is when the evidence was received into the latent print unit. Okay. And what did you receive to be tested? On December 9th, I received six gasoline cans. On December 14th, I received the clear plastic bag. Clear plastic bag? Yes. And on January 11th, I received a revolver and another gasoline container. Revolver and another can? Yes. Gasoline can? You able to test uh, bullets and shells? I did not. I say, are you capable of testing bullets and also the shell casing of bullets? We do process uh, cartridges and cartridge cases. I did not receive any in this particular case. There's never a request made to test the bullets or the shell cases? That's correct. No, okay. Nothing was submitted. However, you were sent <laughs> on 111, you received a revolver. Yes. And you did test the re revolver as well? Yes. Okay. Now, you said there was six gas cans. That was the first, yes. Okay. And let's do one at a time. You tested the gas tank cans, is that correct? Correct. Did you find any latent prints on the gas can? I did not find any latent prints to compare with known impressions. Okay, when you say developed latent prints, I don't quite understand what that is. Can you help me out and explain to me what you mean by developing a print? Okay, a latent print is normally the unintentional reproduction of the ridge structure that's inadvertently left on a surface after touching. And when I refer to known impressions, it's a fingerprint normally that's on a fingerprint card. Okay. So that's how I um, am explaining my explanation. So when I am processing evidence for latent prints, that is the ridge structure that's inadvertently left on a surface. And when we say latent prints, you have latent prints with a ridge structure, and do you have a latent prints where you may see the presence, but you can't appreciate the, the ridges, so that way they could be a basis of comparison, you know what I mean? Yes, sometimes we develop a ridge structure that's not comparison value. Exactly. There may be um, a few ridges or a few characteristics, but not enough to make a comparison. So we do find um, sometimes ridge structure that is no value to us for comparison. On any of the items that were sent to you to be tested, did you find ridge structures that were not of comparison values? Yes, I did. Okay, and what, what, which items had ribs? There was ridge structure of no value on the first six gasoline cans that I mentioned. Okay. When you say no value that you could not use them as a basis to compare with the known print? Yes. Okay. And on the revolver, there was no ridge structure developed at all. Okay. And on the uh, last gas can in January, there was no ridge structure on that gas can. about the clear plastic bag? On the clear plastic bag, there were latent prints of comparison value that were identified. Okay, but there were none um, that were unusable in terms of no ridge structure? There was one uh, spot on the bag that had ridge structure that was not of value. Okay. And you had a print card for both individuals, Mr. Stringer and Mr. Smith? Yes. Okay. And the bag itself, you said that the print that stood out was the print that you have identified as that of Mr. Stringer? There were four latents that were identified. Four latents. Yes. And, you did, and is it true that you did not find any comparable print structures or latent prints that you can identify here under oath with Mr. Stringer? I'm sorry, Mr. Smith. 
there were four identified to Mr. Stringer and no identifications no. to Mr. Smith. Not on the gun, not on the bag, not on mm -hmm. the gas can. That's correct. Okay. So in your opinion, there's no proof, there's nothing to suggest that he's ever touched that. That's correct. No further questions. Thank you, Mr. Smith. <laughs> You just test the bag for prints, right? Yes. You don't know how prints got there, if they're there? I don't know how they were placed there, no. And you don't do any type of analysis of the bag? Is it an old bag, a new bag? You no, just, that's correct. You just correct. take the prints? Yes, that's correct. I just process for latent prints. Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Collins? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. You indicated that, um, well, let me ask you this. I know that you did some other testing. Uh, of other items. You talked a little bit about some testing that you did with regard to latent fingerprints on the gun itself. Yes, I processed the gun, processed for, latent the gun prints. for latent prints. I'm sorry. Um, do you have any documentation as to how the um, gun itself and the bag came to you, whether they were packaged together, whether they were separate? Is there anything in your particular file that would reflect that? The bag was submitted at a different time than the weapon. Okay. So I don't know the relationship to those, if any. Okay. And with regard to the revolver itself, you, you termed it a revolver, correct? Yes. Okay. I didn't want to misstate. Um, when you uh, processed it for latent prints and you said that there were no, uh, you were un unable to find any ridge structure of value on the revolver. That's correct. Okay. Is that unusual? There are many times that we process weapons that we do not find any uh, latent prints. However, there are times that we do. I don't have a percentage <coughs> of when we find prints or when we don't. So. Okay. The lack of finding a fingerprint, does that mean that the object was never touched? The lack of being able to process a latent print uh, with ridge structure that's valuable? It's possible to touch um, an item and not leave a print behind. Okay. And with regard to the grip of a gun, say, is there anything significant about the, the type of weapon that it was as to the likelihood of a, being able to lift a, a valuable ridge structure latent print? Well, the surface does play a part of um, if, it's, if a latent print can be left or not. <clears throat> it's more difficult to leave a latent print on a textured surface than it is on a smooth surface, however, still possible. Okay. Um, so more difficult, was, but still possible. possible. Did she say it was, you said it was, it was possible. possible? Yes. It was possible. Okay. Um, with regard to the weapon that you processed in this case, would, did that have a textured grip? I don't recall offhand without seeing seeing the weapon. Okay, thank you. Um, with regard to, you were asked a question about ballistics or bullets being examined. Um, do other areas of um, Michigan State Police Crime Lab also do that, specifically the city of Detroit and other laboratory uh, analysts? We have um, eight laboratories in the state where seven of our laboratories <coughs> process for latent prints. Okay. And how about the ballistics that were asked uh, uh, about? The, the firearms examination? Correct. Yes, we have laboratories that do um, you're calling it ballistics, but I'm not sure what you're you're asking Firearms for the testing. Firearms identification or yes. testing, comparisons between bullets and, and weapons having been fired from that weapon, things of those that nature. Yes, some of our crime laboratories have a firearms unit that can do that type of examination. Okay, so when you were asked about uh, the weapon and the bullets themselves, other than your role in the latent fingerprint analysis of the items that you did, can you say with any degree of certainty whether or not other evidence was submitted elsewhere or to another analyst? In my report, I um, indicate that the revolver was transferred to the firearms <coughs> unit for further analysis. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right. Thank you, Mr. Evans. Just brief. Are you the state police? Is that the only fingerprint uh, uh, analysis unit in this tri-county, greater uh, metropolitan area? Well, we have a crime laboratory in Sterling Heights. Okay. The state police also has a crime laboratory that does uh, latent print analysis in Northville. And I'm aware of the Oakland County Sheriff's Department has a laboratory where they also have a latent print unit. And was there any indication that this information had been sent out to the Oakland County Sheriff's Office to test for prints? That I'm not, I, I haven't heard anything about relating okay, okay. to that. Thank you, ma'am. Mr. Smith. Nothing wrong. All right. Thank you very much, ma'am. You may step down. Thank you. Ms. Collins, how many more witnesses do you have? 
we did seek some stipulations, but without stipulations, we have five. Five more. Yes, okay, Your Honor. Call your next one. Thank you. People call Aaron Coho to the stand. <laughs> Place you under oath, please. Could you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to provide is the truth? So help you God. I do. Thank you. Please have a seat right up here. And your honor, I apologize. Is there a stapler in the courtroom mm -hmm. that I can borrow? Uh, you get you one, yes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good could afternoon. I, could I please have you state your full name, spell both your or Spell your first and last name for the record, please. Erin Coho. It's E-R-I-N-C-O-H-O-E. And where are you employed? I'm employed with the Michigan State Police, assigned to the Sterling Heights Crime Lab. And uh, what is your job title? I'm a detective sergeant. Okay. And uh, in your role with the Michigan State Police Crime Lab, what, uh, what are you called upon to examine? What types of testing do you do? Trace evidence, including fire debris, fibers, and footwear. Uh, were you called upon to examine certain evidence that was brought in or sent to you via the West Bloomfield Township Police Department with regard to items being submitted for analysis uh, for the presence of uh, flammable liquids? Or Yes, I was. Were. And what were you looking for? Any type of ignitable liquid. Okay. And um, specifically as it relates to uh, footwear, were you called upon to examine some, uh, some items including a pair of black athletic shoes uh, and it was submitted to you as belonging to Smith? <laughs> yes, for ignitable liquids I did, yes. For ignitable liquids. How is it that you go about examining a, an object or an item for flammable liquids or ignitable liquids? With, fire, with anything you're looking for flammable liquids, we don't actually <coughs> test the debris, we test the air that's inside of the bag. Each sample is in a nylon bag, which traps the air in it. We place a charcoal strip in the bag, so if there's any ignitable liquids in the debris, it'll adhere to the charcoal, and the charcoal is what we actually test. And did you do that in this particular case with the items that were submitted by West Bloomfield Township Police Department? Yes, I did. Of those items, were there a pair of black athletic shoes belonging to Smith? That's how they were Objection to belonging to Smith, Your Honor. She and, doesn't think she's in a position to say who they belong to. And mm -hmm. I, I, don't, I think it's disingenuous for the prosecutor to ask her that make that part of the record of uh, giving him those shoes. Uh, ask her about the shoes, that, but don't give it a, the shoe a name. Your Honor, I'm using the name that is codified on the report, and it's based on the information as it was submitted. I thought I was trying to make that clear with Ms. Coho that that is how it was distinguished or delineated among the items. And I think that can be done without making them his shoe. Well, um, certainly, again, this is not a jury trial. I, I understand that she's referencing a report with that name, so go ahead. Thank you. If I tell you it was in container number 17, will that mean anything to you right off the top of your head? No. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes. Thank you. I'm showing you what's been marked as People's Proposed Exhibit number 10. I'd ask you to take a look at that and tell me if you recognize that. Yes, this is my report under laboratory number SH16-3888. It's record number one, and it has my signature at the end. Okay. And are there, just so I'm clear, uh, were you called upon to examine other items that were also uh, classified as record one under the same laboratory report number or a different one, but also revol uh, involving this case? I received um, 14 items under this case record. I received another case record also looking for ignitable liquid <coughs> testing. And that was from the fire department? Yes. Okay. So I'd like to discuss the items submitted to you by the police department, including item number 17 or container number 17. Can you reference that in your report? Yes, it says one sealed plastic bag labeled item 19, reportedly collected from 4031 Shorecrest, belonging to Smith, containing black athletic shoes. Okay. Now, with regard to those items, were you involved in the investigation in any way other than the items being submitted to you? 
No, I was not. Okay, so you don't have any knowledge of whether that information is accurate or not, correct? No, I'm just saying what was how it was labeled. Okay. Um, in taking a look at your report, um, it, does that accurately reflect the report that you authored after doing your analysis of the items? Yes. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, people move to admit people's proposed exhibit number 10. Any no objection, for example. No objection. Time's received. Go ahead. Thank you. With regard to uh, container number 17, uh, containing those black athletic shoes, uh, were you able to do any testing on that and make any findings? I found gasoline in item number 17, which were black athletic shoes. No further questions from this witness. All right, thank you, Mr. Evans. Thank you. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. Okay, your name again? Erin Coho. Okay, Ms. Coho, you work for the state police? Yes, I do. And you work in one of their labs, is that correct? That's correct. And your primary purpose uh, involving this investigation was to test for the presence of any substance on the shoes, is that correct? Ignitable liquids. Ignitable liquids? Yes. That's like gasoline, flammable. Yes. And you concluded that the, the shoes showed the presence of gasoline. Is that correct? That's correct. And that's it? There's yes. There's no way. And you don't know who those shoes belong to, correct? No, I don't. Okay. And there's no way you can testify here today as who's the last person that was wearing those shoes, is that correct? That's correct, I can't. Okay, all you know is the presence of gasoline, correct? Yes. And that's the sum of substance of your testimony. That, it's just gasoline, period. Period, yes. Okay, no identity of Mr. Smith or Mr. Stringer? No. Okay, you didn't test for DNA or anything like that? No. No further questions. Thank you, Mr. Smith. No questions. All right, thank you very much, Ms. Cole, you may step down. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, the people next call Gwen Curiacus, and I may have mispronounced that name, the last name. My name is Quinn Kiriakis McLaughlin, Q U I N N K U R I A K U Z M C L A U C H L I N. Thank you. Um, I'd like to direct your attention back to the date of December 9th of 2016. Where were you living at that time? Um, at home, where I'm currently living still. Okay. What street is your home on? Ivernus Lane. Ivernus Lane? Were you also living there on December 8th, 2016? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, do you recall uh, where you were in the evening hours of December 8th, 2016? I was home. Okay. And was there ever a time that you had friends over and you were in the garage? Yeah, we had stepped outside for a second and I had two friends over. I'm sorry, what? You we had, that? Yeah, we had stepped outside for a second in the garage and I had two friends over. The, the people you were with, how many people were you with? Two. Two, okay. Do you, were they men, women, or boys? Men. Or oh, men, okay. And you said that you were in the garage. Is that an attached garage or detached? Attached. And was the garage door, uh, and when I say the door, I mean a door that you would open in order for a car to get in. Was that open or closed? It was open. Okay. Um, what were the three of you doing in the garage? Um, we were smoking. And did you have any interaction with anybody other than the two men that were at your home and in your garage with you? Yeah, there was a man that had walked down the street asking for directions. Okay. And did you see what direction he came from? Um, he was coming from, I'm not really good at like north and south, okay. but he was coming from um, like 
the really bumpy side of the road, I guess you can say, and heading towards um, Jalen's house. Do you know what street that would have been surrounding your home? Yeah, it was on Iverness. It was on Iverness? Mm -hmm. Okay, and he was coming from, are you familiar with Lone Pine Road and Long Lake Road? Yeah, he was coming from like Normanwood and um, before Lone Pine. So coming from Normanwood before mm -hmm. Lone Pine? Yes, ma'am. Do you see the map behind you? Yes. Okay. Now, I, I know, do you see your street on that map? Um, yeah. Okay. And uh, do you see your home uh, listed on that map? Yes. Okay. Where your home is, can you tell me whether the person that uh, you saw, the direction that they were coming from, that he was coming from, was it... Uh, from above where your house is located on that map or below? Um, I believe it was from where? Okay, take your time she if you she know. Believe, she's speculating. Uh, oh. She don't know she don't answer. know. If you know, tell us if you know. If you don't, yeah. you can say no. Uh, I, I'm just trying to look at the map. And Your Honor, if she needs to stand up to get closer sure. to the map, could she do that? Thank you. Where is Long Lake Road on this map? I'm not sure if it's shown, Your Honor. And it, it's okay. If you can't tell from that map, okay, it's I okay. I can't tell from the map. Let me ask you this. Where Were you standing in your garage facing toward the back of the garage or facing out toward the roadway? Facing toward the road. Okay. As you were facing toward the roadway, did you see which direction the man came from? Yes. So if I was facing the road, he came from the left and was okay. walking right. So he came from the left, mm -hmm. and then did he interact with you or say anything to you? He said, do you guys know where Shorecrest is? Okay. And did you know where Shorecrest was? Yeah. So did you uh, give, the dire give directions to Shorecrest to the man? Yes. I didn't personally, but someone I was with. Okay. And uh, let me ask you this. If you saw that person again, would you recognize him? No. Okay. Uh, you said that he was a man. Mm -hmm. Could you tell? Is that a yes? Yes. And I'm sorry, we're recording everything, so I'll, I'll remind you if you forget. Um, could you tell whether what race he was? Yeah. What race was he? He was African American. Okay. And uh, could you tell anything else about him, like what he was wearing or how old he was, anything like that? No, not detailed. Okay. Did he ever come up and approach your garage itself? No. So in speaking with him or ex having an exchange with him, where was he? In the street. Okay. And you said that directions were given to him. Do you yes. recall the directions that were given to him? They said turn left, and then at the next street, you're going to turn left, and that's her crest. Okay. And did he at some point leave? Mm-hmm. Is that a yes? Yes, I'm sorry. That's okay. And when he left, which direction, if you're looking outside of your garage toward the street, which direction did he go, to your left or to your right? To the right, continuing the way he was walking. Okay. And was that the correct way to go in, in connection with those directions? Yes. Did you or anybody that you were with ask if he was looking for a particular house belonging to someone that you're familiar with? Yes. What did, it, was it you that asked him that? No, one of the people I was with asked if... Objection, um, then that's hearsay. Your response? Your Honor, I'm not offering it for the truth of the matter asserted, but I'm offering it to show why the directions were given to the specific area that they were. I don't know about did, that, Your Honor. Yeah. That's, okay. that's hearsay. hearsay. After that person left, did you place a phone call or text to anybody? Yes. And who was that? Jalen. And what did you text him? I said, hey, someone's looking for your house. Okay. Do you recall what time this was? Around 11.30. 11.30 p.m.? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, I have no further questions for this witness. All right, thank you. Ma'am, can you state your name again for the record? Quinn Kiriakis McLaughlin. Within the last 10 years, have you been convicted of a crime involving theft of dishonesty, lying, stealing, cheating? No, sir. Okay. Now, I'm going to draw your attention back to December the 8th. You say you're at your home, or was it Inverness? Yes. Okay. And you were with two other individuals? Yes. Who were they? My friends Nathan uh, Combo and Jonathan Yilpin. They're all about the same age? Nathan is 20 and Jonathan's 18 years. Okay, and you're in a garage, late at night smoking. You say, what? What were you smoking? Cigarettes. Cigarettes. You had the garage door open. 
Yes, sir. And how long did you been out there before you somebody uh, crossed your path, obviously? Approximately about five minutes. Five minutes. So you're smoking, you're talking. Yes. And you're engaged in a conversation with each other, correct? Yes. Like smokers do, right? Yes, sir. And you weren't paying attention outside no more than just smoking and looking, correct? Until attention was brought to the outside, okay. yes. Now, you say that at some point there was an individual that appeared from your left, is that correct? Yes. And you only saw that person's image because it appeared from your left, is that correct? And we heard him speaking. I understand that. I said his image. I haven't got to speaking yet. Yes, sir. I said his image. He came from the left, correct? But you didn't see where he started off. Yes. Is that correct? Correct. All right. <clears throat> he just came from within your line of sight from the left. So in terms of, you said, from the bumpy side of the street, uh, you're inside of a garage, correct? You're yes, in, sir. It's cold outside. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Right? And, and, and it's fair to, fair, fair to say that inside of the garage, there's two sides, left and the right, correct, and the garage door. And you're inside the garage, right? Yes, sir. So obviously that being located inside the garage, that obstructs your view from having a peripheral view like I'm extending my hand. You're inside of a garage, correct? Yes, sir. So you don't have a peripheral view if you're inside of the garage, correct? Yes, sir, but I'd like to say that Just we... Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, at some point there was an individual that you saw, is that correct? Yes. And he, he got your attention, correct? Yes. And you said that that person never came to the, your, your garage. He was approximately, what, 20 feet? 15 feet, 30 feet away from you, how far? Approximately 10, 15 feet. 10 to 15 feet, right? Yes, sir. There's lights on your garage door, lights, lights on your house? Yes. Okay. So you were able to see that person's gait and walk and characteristic, physical characteristic? Yeah. Right. You never gave the police a description of the person, did you? No. Right, you didn't tell how tall he was, did you? No. Yeah, you never said if he was a little bitty man or a big man, did you? No, sir. Right. It's because you weren't able to appreciate that. Right? Correct, yeah. Right? Yes, sir. Okay. You never talked about his hair in terms of description of his hair, whether it was under the earlobes, correct? Correct. Right. Or whether he wore glasses like me, correct? Correct. Or had a ball head like mine, right? You never did that, right? Correct. And the police never asked you, did they? They asked if I could possibly meet with a sketch artist if I had enough information, but I didn't get right. a good enough sight on him, too. Right. And, and not only that, did they ever ask you that you want to come and, 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 and take part or in a lineup, a photo lineup or a live lineup to see if you can identify that person? They asked if I would be able to identify someone in a lineup, and I did say no. You said no? Yes. Okay. So today, and you said that, that, and so today, you can't say that this young man right here was the person, right? Correct. You don't know who he is, is that correct? Correct. Okay. And you were 10 feet away from that person, is that correct? And you say that that's not the person. Objection, Your Honor. That's not what she said. Objection, sister. You can't identify him as being the person that was out there, right? Correct, right? Yes, sir. And you was ten feet away, correct? Yes. And you, and for the record, would you agree with me? Ten feet away is the distance from I am from you. Um. I would say he was maybe a little further than ten feet, okay, maybe then fifteen. How about here? Um, a little bit more further away. It was also very dark out. I just didn't ask you about darkness. That's about from right here to you? Right? Yes. Okay. And you had your glasses on, correct? No, I did not. You didn't have your glasses on? No, sir. But you said it was lights around the house, correct? Yeah. Right? Okay. And, okay. and you couldn't give a description? No, sir. All right. And what you saw is not this man? I couldn't tell you that. No further questions. Mr. Smith. He was just being questioned, and he asked you a question. 
from what you could see from inside the garage and you wanted you to give a yes or no answer and you wanted to elaborate? Yes. What do you want to say? So like I would want to elaborate on I wasn't in the back of my garage I could see I was where my driveway and my garage met so I could see like the brick on my house I wasn't completely like my peripherals were not in the garage mm -hmm. I was the border of my driveway but you were in the garage right Council, okay I'm sorry no problem thank you very much ma'am you are all set thank you <laughs> testimony now ladies and gentlemen it is 410 there's approximately four to five more witnesses um, so we cannot complete the examination today um, I'm up here with council trying to figure out our next schedule date if you all want to hold on and are interested in that date I can let you know otherwise um, we're gonna finish testimony today right now okay uh, <laughs> So,